I would like to call this meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order, please. And um, first we will have a roll call. Mr. Armstrong. Here. Ms. Chester. Here. Ms. Harwood. Ms. McLaughlin. Here. Ms. Uchman. Here. Mr. Warmbrun. And Mr. Welch. Here. Okay. So we have we do have a quorum. And are there any changes to our agenda this evening? No changes. Okay. Uh, and if everybody has had a chance to uh, scan the draft of the minutes of the last meeting, and uh, the chair entertains a motion for acceptance or any changes. I'll move that we accept the minutes as tendered. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they are approved. And are there any written communications regarding the case? No. Okay. Uh, before we begin, this is the time in the meeting that we always ask me members in the audience who may wish to give testimony before the board this evening to please rise and raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give before the board this evening is truthful to the best of your knowledge? Thank you. And then we just ask that when you do come forward to the table, please uh, sign in and state your name. Thank you. So we have one case this evening. It's case number ZBA-2014-C-01, a dash 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 request by Elizabeth Hendrick for a conditional use permit to allow the installation and use of a ca catering kitchen and banquet center within an existing building at 801 Killarney in the Light Industrial Office Zoning District. Um, my name is Rebecca. I'm the planning intern who will be presenting this case this evening. So, um, 801 Killarney, which is where the proposed uh, uses will be located, is at the southeast corner of Killarney and Linview. Uh, the, the lot is 0.78 acres. Um, the building was last used as a, used as a church, um, and as stated earlier, um, the proposed uses are for a catering facility and a banquet hall. Um, and in the application, the applicant stated that this particular location is really ideal for these proposed uses uh, because of the proximity to Lincoln Avenue and Interstate 74. And this is a picture of the building, the existing building and um, it's taken from the southeast corner of the lot. This figure shows some of the surrounding uses in the, um, in the neighborhood. South of the property are storage, um, storage facilities, offices. Um, east of the property is the cemetery, which is unincorporated presently. To the north are also storage um, and medical offices um, adjacent to the property to the west is the Harley Davidson store and then in the broader neighborhood area there are hotels um, some apartments to the south west and uh, there's also a gas station and the the zoning districts that these uses fall into are primarily the light industrial office mix, which is IN1, and general business, which is B3. So south and north of the property um, are in the light industrial office district, and to the west is the general business B3 district. 
And again, the, the cemetery is adjacent to the property to the east, and that's currently unincorporated. Uh, future land use patterns for this neighborhood um, include community business and light industrial office, so pretty consistent with what's there now. So uh, before digging into a more detailed evaluation of the proposal, um, the, the zoning administrator determined that uh, these proposed uses are closest to restaurant in, in the zoning ordinance, and um, restaurants are permitted in B3, and they are permitted as a conditional use in IN1. So digging into the site plan a little more, um, uh, the staff has found that the, develop, the proposed use and site plan is primarily, for the, for the most part, um, consistent with all of our development regu regulations. And um, I will be going through several of these. Um, so starting with uh, floor area ratio and open, state, open space ratio. Um, pertaining to the, the FAR, um, the requirement in IN1 is two and the property which has, will have no changes to the exterior building with the exception of an outdoor patio which would not affect the FAR. Um, so it's, the uses are to use the building uh, mostly as is. Um, the, the FAR is currently 0.2 and this wouldn't change. So this is far below the, the requirement. Um, open, sp open space regulations are not um, required in IN1, so uh, we do not need to worry about that. So both of these uh, regulations have been met according to the ordinance. Uh, regarding the uh, disposal of waste, uh, because this is a proposed um, catering business and restaurant, uh, you can see on the site plan in the southeast corner, there's a proposal for a new dumpster enclosure, which uh, is consistent with our ordinance uh, which requires screening of trash containers for all non-residential and multifamily uses, um, and they can't be visible from the public right-of-way or adjacent properties. And this is also consistent. Uh, moving on to the parking, um, our zoning ordinance requires a, a certain number of parking and disabled parking spaces depending on the square footage of the building, and we found that these um, the square footage of the building is consistent with the allotted parking spaces that are available. Um, 31 spaces would be required. There's currently 37 on the site. Um, further, the addition of an outdoor patio would not impact um, this, this requirement. Uh, additionally, two disabled parking spaces are required for um, for this site, and you can see on the site plan there are existing three uh, disabled parking spaces. Um, two are required with an eight-foot aisle, and this is consistent with what is here presently. Um, staff um, did discover that there are 11 spaces that encroach onto the adjacent property, the Woodlawn Cemetery, um, and we've had extensive communication with the applicant about this, and they are in communication with the current property owner as well as the cemetery owner to um, allow the parking to remain to come to an agreement whether that be an easement or uh, possibly the purchase of that um, strip of land where those 11 spaces exist. Uh, moving on to the setback, um, the ordinance uh, requires 15 feet setback in the front, uh, five in the side, and 10 in the rear. And we found that the existing building meets these requirements as well. And this is just an additional aerial view. So um, also gathered some information from the applicant about their operations of the proposed uses. The catering business uh, is proposed to operate from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, with occasionally later hours if, uh, if needed. And there, um, this, this would happen um, during the first phase. So the uses are proposed over two phases. 
and the catering business, uh, they'd like to begin construction spring 2014. And the second phase, which would include the banquet hall, um, this would, this would uh, be anticipated to begin sometime in 2015. Um, and this would also have an expansion of staff, and they're looking at five to seven events per week, um, but this would be on an on a as-scheduled basis, as staff understands it. Um, additionally, uh, have spoken to the applicant if parking were to become an issue that it's possible they could uh, come to an agreement with adjacent property owners because uh, the research that staff has done found that most of the surrounding businesses are open until th they close between 4 and 6 p.m. Um, so pretty much typical normal business hours and it's possible that if needed um, an agreement could be made with those uh, adjacent lots to use the parking uh, after normal business hours. So the uh, requirements for a conditional use permit. Uh, the first requirement is that the proposed use is conducive to the public convenience at that location. And we find that this location is uh, certainly convenient for this use with the proximity to these really key uh, transportation corridors which makes it accessible to the public and also um, ideal for the delivery of catering and banquet products. The second requirement is the proposed use is designed, located, or otherwise injurious to the public welfare. And um, we find that the uses proposed um, are designed, located, and otherwise injurious to the public welfare. Um, there is a separation of uses. The kitchen is located on the south side of the building, which is where a kitchen currently exists. And opposite um, on the north side of the building is where the banquet hall would be located. Uh, delivery products for the kitchen would be delivered to an entrance uh, directly to the kitchen. Hey, Rebecca. I think you um, forgot a not in there. It's oh. not injurious. I apologize. <laughs> That's important. Um, or, uh, okay, um, so the requirement is proposed use is designed, located, or otherwise not injurious to the public welfare, and we find that the proposed uses um, meet that requirement. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, the third requirement is the proposed use conforms to the applicable regulations and standards of and preserves the essential character of the district in which it shall be located, except where such regulations and standards are modified. And with the exception of 11 parking spaces encroaching on the cemetery's western boundary, which we've been in uh, communication with the applicant about, and they are actively resolving, uh, we find that the proposed uses do meet all other regulations and standards. So in summary, uh, the applicant proposes a catering facility and banquet center at 801 Killarney in the IN1 Light Industrial Office Zoning District. The Urbana Zoning Ordinance allows restaurant as a conditional use in this district. The proposed use is to be located in the existing building and with the exception of an outdoor patio would not make changes to the building's exterior. The proposed use is located near key transportation corridors including Lincoln Avenue and Interstate 74. These will facilitate public access and the delivery of catering products. And with the exception of 11 parking spaces that encroach over the Woodlawn Cemetery, the proposed use conforms to all applicable regulations and standards and preserves the essential character of the zoning district. And it will not pose a detriment to the district in which it is located. Uh, lastly, I wanted to remind the board of um, the Urbana Comprehensive Plan goals. Uh, goal 28 states that uh, we hope to develop a diversified and broad stable tax base. Goal 28.1, uh, to encourage an appropriate balance of growth. And goal 28.6, uh, to increase the allocation of land to tax generation commercial uses in appropriate locations. So in summary, staff uh, recommends the Zoning Board of Appeals grant the uh, proposed conditional use permit in case ZBA 2014 C01 uh, with the attached two conditions. Um, wanted to make sure that the 
uh, waste enclosure on the site plan uh, meets requirements um, and is approved by the zoning administrator. And uh, secondly, that the owner shall secure permission from the owner of the cemetery property that would allow the existing parking to continue to encroach uh, where it exists currently. And I can take questions. All right, thank you very much. Do we have any questions for staff? No questions. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> Your presentation was very clear. Uh, would the petitioners or their representative like to speak? Yes. Yes, good evening. Uh, on behalf of Hendrick House, thank you very much for your time and consideration this evening. My name is Steve Pickett. I'm the architect for Hendrick House. I'd also like to also introduce Betsy Hendrick, who is a second generation uh, owner of Hendrick House and Sue Dawson, who's the Vice President of Food Services for Hendrick House. Hendrick House has been on campus at the University of Illinois for about 60 years. During that time, you know, serving students uh, as a residential and food service facility. Um, over those years, Hendrick House has developed a very outstanding food service. At this point, this is what's prompting um, this request uh, and looking at, at the purchase of the facility at 801 Killarney Drive as far as expanding their food service uh, preparation ability. Um, I think at this time, Joy, as Rebecca had mentioned, if I may, the, uh, the food service will be here at the south corner, about 1,850 square feet. The future bank facility about 1,910 square feet on the north side. That probably won't happen until late next year. Uh, right now, our sole focus has been on the, uh, the food catering uh, facility, which is important to Hendrick House. I think along those lines, if there's any questions that we can answer, uh, we'd like to do so. I think the staff has covered the issue of <clears throat> the accessibility to the site pretty well, that it's close to both Lincoln Avenue and the interstate, and that's one reason why you've, the, the uh, uh, applicants have chosen this particular location. And uh, I guess the only real issue is uh, how do the applicants see this business as growing? Obviously, they mm -hmm. anticipate some kind of growth with the banquet facilities, also with the possibility of a need for additional parking, and, uh, and what kind of impact might that increased growth and traffic have on the district? I know that the district is considered light industrial, meaning that you know low intensity traffic in the district. I think as far as you know, traffic being two uh, components, one would be uh, truck traffic. There won't be a lot of trucks going up and down the street. There'll be the trucks that are leaving the facility be uh, basically, basically vans, so smaller uh, residential type vans taking food out of the facility. Um, two different points across uh, Urbana and Champaign. Uh, the nice thing about this traffic pattern too, during the uh, day with a catering kitchen with three to five employees, there might be three to five cars on the, on the parking lot. Uh, when the, uh, the, banquet, the banquet hall does open in a year or a year and a half, um, so that could seat up to 95 people. That's been a concern, but I think that we have with the office space across the street, um, our, our usage is kind of counter cyclical or counter time-wise to what the daily businesses have here. So I think it's going to meld pretty well as far as having enough parking for uh, what we want to use the building for. Okay. You said that the banquet hall would seat about 95 people? Up, up to about 95 people. Oh. So what, uh, Kind of the clientele that Hendrick House would be catering to would be businesses in Urbana-Champaign, um, Greek organizations, uh, college groups, that, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, really in the evenings. Am I doing so okay so far? So? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sue Dawson. And one, just one comment I'd like to make is that while we, we do anticipate building our catering business from this location, we do a lot of our catering off-site. Mm -hmm. 
and a lot of our big events obviously would still have to be off-site because this is not a really big facility that we're talking about. We're really talking about smaller groups, um, you know, rotary luncheons, things like that during the daytime, some small group settings, dinners and stuff, but the really big types of events that we want to be able to do more of and hope this kitchen will facilitate us being able to do will be done off-site, so deliveries will be made off-site, not huge crowds at this location. Okay. Uh, I have okay. to remind you to sign in, please. Sign in? Okay. Yes. Any other questions for the petitioner? Or All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, for Thanks for your time. Are we ready for a motion? Do we have a second? I second. Thank you. Okay. Here we have a roll call, please. Oh, by the way, is there any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Just to <laughs> Okay. Ms. Chester? Aye. Ms. McLaughlin? Aye. Ms. Utman? Aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. And Mr. Armstrong? Aye. Okay, it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any old business? No old business. <laughs> New business. <laughs> yep. And uh, any staff report? Um, well, we haven't had any cases forwarded out of uh, the zoning board for quite some time, so nothing to report on past cases. Um, staffing wise, um, trying to remember when the last meeting was, but we have lost some planners since then. Mm -hmm. Robert Myers, our planning manager, um, has uh, moved to. Um, St. Joseph, Missouri, mm -hmm. and uh, Rebecca Bird has moved to uh, Wokingham, England, and uh, D.T. Kambouge has moved to Seattle. Mm -hmm. So we will be getting some new planners in hopefully pretty soon. Yeah, good. All right, anything else? I think we're adjourned. <laughs>